that corner person is so important. I mean, look at Angelo Dundee, what he how he helped Muhammad Ali when he was fighting uh uh what was that British this, guy's the, name when he Oh uh, Henry Cooper, Henry Cooper Henry Cooper when he he found the stuff in the glove, eh? Uh, cut the glove, yeah, he cut yeah. the glove. Well, yeah. he didn't cut the glove, Russ. He just looked at the cut that was on the glove. Right, yeah, right, 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 right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The cut that was on the glove, right. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> He That's did. how important a corner man really is, though, hey, Russ. Of course, absolutely. He did the same thing in the Liston fight when when Liston comes back to the corner, when the Ali eyes. comes back to the corner of the eye, right? He says, my eyes are burning. My eyes, you got to stop the fight. You got to stop the fight. And Angelo says, yeah. no, we're not stopping anything here. You know, this is the big show. There's no stop. I know. But do you remember, do you remember Muhammad Ali says, Angelo, I see, I see three of them. I three see, I see three sunnies. Yeah. Well, just hit the guy in the middle. Hit the guy in the middle. That's right. Yeah, hit the guy in the middle. Yeah, that's uh, – uh, yeah, I mean, listen, there's a lot of great moments like that. And, you know, Dundee was one of my one of my favorites. Like, I'm never going to quantify – and he was a good friend of mine. Like, whenever I'd go to Miami, I would call him. I met him first in 1980. Yeah. First here in um, – uh, no, first in Miami and then – here in Montreal when he was here for the Leonard Duran fight. Now, of course, I was just a kid then, right? I'm like well, 19 years old, you know, he doesn't really know who I am. He doesn't pay any attention. But later, later on, he had come to Canada for, to watch the Nationals one year. And then I would stay in touch with him whenever I went to Miami. And when he came to Montreal, I, I'm sorry, to Toronto to do um, a book signing for a, a book he had written. I, and I believe it was for it was either for his book that says, I only talk winning or my view from the corner. I think it was my view from the corner. And uh, we interviewed him on, on TSN on my, on my show that I had on TSN on, on in this corner. Yeah. And uh, after, after the taping of the show and everything, we took him out to dinner. And when I took him out to dinner, I started to do magic tricks for him. And, uh, you know, I, I love doing magic. I read that. Tricks. Yeah. Yeah. And all he kept, all he kept saying was, Oh, Muhammad would have loved that. Oh, Muhammad would have loved that. And that was a really great compliment, you know, for, for him to say that. And we had a great time, and he was a good friend of mine. I'll never consider him a great trainer as far as trainers as in the, in the, in the, in the true sense of the word, like a, like a Georgie Benton or an Eddie Futch. Yeah. But as a corner man, he's number sharp one. As a, wow. Sharp uh, as a tack. The best. The best guy in the corner knew what to tell you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the best. Mm -hmm. The yeah. best. Wow. My idol. Yeah, I agree. You know, Russ, I trained with Angelo for about six weeks before the Olympic Games. Did you ever know that? No, I didn't know that. Wow. Yeah, because I was down in Miami Beach and I trained. He was in Hollywood, Florida, because he was. I trained a bit at the Fifth Street Gym, which he originally is famous for, right. but. Then he moved to Hollywood, Florida, and I trained with him there because he had a fighter named Elvis Yarrow. Do you remember the name? Sure, Elvis of course Yarrow? I do. Of course. Yeah, he was a great fighter. Had he not had the craziness and the drug problems, he would have been a world champion. Right. But I was sparring with him, man. I sparred with him oh, probably wow. 100 rounds. Wow. And Angelo was super good because what was his, he was a uh, world-renowned – the guy. Sports Illustrated always got things from him. He was he had all the pictures. He had a he had a his garage was full of memorabilia. His name was Hank Kaplan. You remember Hank? Sure, I, of course I know. I met Hank, Hank Kaplan too in January of 1980. I met Kaplan, yeah. Chris Dundee, and Angelo. Carry on. Yeah. yeah, yeah, because Hank Kaplan was good friends with a guy named that I knew, a guy named Nelson Kitchen. They used to write back and forth all the time. Right. And Hank took us to the gym and introduced us to Angelo. And Angelo, you wouldn't believe what he gave me. He gave me Sugar Ray Leonard's white leather, white boxy boots that I still have at home that I got Sugar Ray Leonard later wow. on to sign and stuff. Wow. Classic. <laughs> That's strong. Yeah. I met yeah. Leonard when I was at your event. Yeah, that's right. When we were here in Vancouver, that's right. Yeah, and he was at your event too in yes, uh, in was. Vegas. Yes, he was. Rival. And I still yeah. see him. I saw him. I saw him two weeks ago at the uh, Roy Jones at the Roy Jones Mike Tyson fight because he was one of the commentators. I couldn't get to him because they were like they kind of had them up on an elevated platform and stage. So oh, yeah. after the fight was over, like I just walked over and he saw me and he pointed to me and I waved at him and. Uh, so at least we saw each other, but he knows me like we're good friends. You know, it's kind of yeah, nice. Yeah. Uh, here was Super. a kid that I, as a kid, I chased him down in Montreal to get an autograph. When he, when he came for the press conference with Roberto Duran, he signed an autograph for me. I still have that picture. I want to show it wow. to him one day, but I still yeah, yeah. have the picture that he signed. 
and you know now we're friends so it's it's crazy where life takes you these are great stories yeah. man i'm just yeah. i'm just listening man this is incredible wow. i almost did a tv series with sugar ray leonard is that right no yeah way. it was called uh la heat and it was sugar ray leonard and i were going to be the two leads we were two detectives and uh joseph mary hey, richard pepper was going to produce it and they called me up and says yeah we want to do a series with you and sugar ray leonard i'm like oh my god really okay cool this could be my big break and uh it went on for maybe two or three weeks and uh boom everything changed went into another direction and we got canned yeah <laughs> we didn't even go but that's hollywood. my sugar ray leonard story hollywood, hollywood yeah. <laughs> yeah hollywood weird <laughs> hollywood weird yeah yeah